You're going to learn a lot of things watching this movie. Big one being the difference between a tailor and a kata. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for The Outfit. This just came out on Netflix, at least for Canadian Netflix. And this was a movie that I did want to see back in 2022, but I just never got the chance to. It wasn't in theaters for very long, but I had heard it was a sleeper hit for that year. Like, some people even had it on their top 10 best. When I saw that it was there, I wanted to watch it. And something I want to say right off the bat is that the guys who put this movie together, one of them being the writer for The Intimidation Game, I believe he also directs this movie as well, is that they definitely take a lot of notes from films from the 40s and the 50s ages. I'm always a fan of movies that take place in one location, and that takes skill because you have to keep the audience entertained, you have to not have them be bored, but you also have to keep the story going without leaving said location. And that was something that Hitchcock did all the way back then, and. It's something that I always enjoy to see, especially when it's a film like this, which really, as I said, emulates movies from the 40s and 50s because of the dialogue, how those scenes are portrayed, how the acting goes. You could almost imagine seeing this film as it would have been shot in the 50s and 40s uh, with a side camera and you're watching the characters go throughout the room, right? Not as much cutting. Obviously with modern day technology and filming tactics, there is a little bit more blocking, a little bit more cutting in here. But even then, there are long shots that follow characters around the rooms in this tailor shop. The film follows a cutter, a suit creator, played by Mark Berlance, who does a phenomenal job, by the way. And he has this shop in Chicago, and one of his major clients is a crime family that has a eccentric son, ambitious if not a little bit dim-witted, and he also has a secretary who dreams of leaving uh, Chicago, leaving the area to go on the adventures and kind of go on the adventures that he supposedly went on in his youth, but he keeps a lot of things close to his chest, and you will see that as the movie goes on. But then this one night turns into turmoil, and he is brought into this crime family's activities far more than he ever wanted to, and he has to basically play a game of wits to outsmart a lot of people who are out to kill each other all in this one night. I really liked how Mark played the role. He even went as far as learning how to make suits. Like he went to the areas that he talks about in the movies, the row, to learn how to make a suit. And you see him doing that throughout the movie. He is consistent with that. To the point where he's actually doing stuff that is sensitive to the plot right in front of you, but you really don't notice it because he's just so believable at being what he is and you're also learning a few tidbits about it and how those facts about suit making pertain to the characters pertain to the plot there's a lot of really good lines uh, like one of them being i had a gentleman who said that he didn't care how he looked and my thought was well why would you not that's this cool i really liked a lot of his character because you don't know a lot about him and you are slowly spoon fed little by little more information about him and how he is not exactly what he appears to be and he is a little bit more witty than you would think and i really liked how he interacts with the dangers in this film you don't get as much about him as you would like and there are some scenes that made me hold my breath like the first 30 minutes is solid there's something that happens right at the i would say at the end of the first quarter that i actually went it did do a few things that I wasn't expecting and did a little few writing kind of whoop, like loopy loops that I was not expecting to see. So I really appreciated that. The beginning and the middle are solid of this movie. However, I, I do have to make a note about this. Something about this movie that I liked was its subtlety. I liked how it wasn't really heavy handed for a large portion of it, but I feel at the very end, it's almost like trying to wrap up too many things at once and you get exposition dumps out the wazoo. There are certain things I'm like, okay, I don't need to know that. I like the mystery a little bit more. I, you didn't need to give me all this information. And it just makes the plot just like, brrrr. Like there's one moment where these characters are fighting each other and then all of a sudden one of them breaks out into monologue i'm like okay i mean i guess <laughs> but it does feel like the movie is slightly knocking itself down pegs like i went from like giving it a six and then i went down to a five and it just felt like wow i i was really enjoying how this was going but why is it kind of self-deprecating itself it's kind of feeling like, oh wait, we have to kind of explain ourselves to the audience. It's like, no, 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 you were, you were fine doing what you were doing. 
I do like how the movie comes to its end. I do like the performances by everyone in the film. I, like I said, I really like how the narrative has you for the first two thirds of the film. And while the ending is a tad bit sloppy, I do say that you should watch this, especially now you can watch on uh, Netflix. It has really good writing for the most part. It has solid direction for a very minimalist sort of movie. And it's a good introduction for people who want to know how to make films on a, le on a lower level, a, a, in an independent sort of setting. I will appreciate these kind of movies because they are perfect learning blocks for people who can make movies. Even if it does kind of knock itself down a bit at the very end, I feel like the first two thirds are something that you will really enjoy. And then you might enjoy the ending. You might think it's a little silly. That's up to you. For me, I kind of didn't like how it ended. I felt like I was like, okay, it got so predictable. It went from being very good at giving you twists and turns to being predictable as ass for me. So that is why in the end, I'm going to give the outfit a four out of seven. I really wanted to give it a five. I really did. I thought it was really well put together, but then that, that ending, oh my God. Like there was bits that were happening. I'm like, ah oh man, do we have to do this? It felt like it needed to do it because that's what maybe other movies had done or what the quota was or maybe a producer had some sort of thought about it, but I don't know. I, I just didn't like how it ended. Not the final results of everything. It's just how it got there. It was just so bleh. But anyways, those are my thoughts. Those are just my opinions. I'm very curious to see what you guys have to say. Have you seen this movie? What did you think of it? What are your favorite movies? Some of your favorite movies that take place in one location. That's something that is a niche, but yeah. Anyways, my camera just died. But yeah, let me know in the comments below. And uh, if you guys like this video, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.